I am no Rico Bull for no bull for short, and this is Uncut News. We begin tonight with tragic news from Babis. Police have arrested two persons and are currently searching for two more in connection with the home invasion and suspected murder of an 82-year-old woman in 10 quarantine Babis. The body of the elderly woman, known as Auntie Deo, was discovered bound by the hands and feet. It is believed she was choked to death. According to reports, she was robbed three months prior, but did not report it out of fear of reprisals from the thieves. Oh, poor granny. What is this world coming to? Updating a story from yesterday, the ERC has let the Guyanese critic off with a stern warning. After coming under fire for the inflammatory statements he said during his live Facebook program on Monday, the ERC summoned him to a meeting. There he was made to formally apologize in a video recording. What I said, I have chosen to apologize to the Christian community and the Guyanese black community specifically for what I said. He also promised to use his platform to spread goodwill and tolerance from now on. Instead of fining him, they said that if he says another racially or religiously offensive thing again, they will charge him. If he were to have been convicted of an offense under the Racial Hostility Act, he would have been subjected to a fine of $500,000 and or seven years of imprisonment. If you ask me, they should have dig a fine in heat anyway. And the other angry Puttagy guy that everyone does like to watch just for good measure. <laughs> Both of UG's compasses are on full lockdown mode. According to the university, the lockdown went into effect 6 p.m. on Monday last for security reasons. This means students, faculty members, and auxiliary staff will not be allowed to enter the school. This lockdown will continue until further notice by the UG's administration. Here's a great idea for Father's Day. One of these must be his favorite color, and if not, take the block. Get it at Triple B's. For delivery, call them on telephone number 682-8326. Don't be cheap. Show your dad some appreciation. Triple B's Enterprise. Remember the name. GCOM Chairman Claudette Singh has officially instructed the Chief Elections Officer Keith Sloanfield to prepare his elections report to the Commission by 13 hours Thursday. In the letter, Chairman Singh was clear that Lowenfield has to submit his report using the results of the national recount, which shows the PPP winning the elections by 15,416 votes. Meanwhile, in Linden, supporters of the APNU AFC staged a protest this morning at the GCOM office in Mackenzie. The coalition member, Jermaine Figueroa, explained that the demonstration stems from the party's non-acceptance of the results of the recount for the 2020 elections. He echoed the party's contention that the Elections Commission should not include the votes that the coalition recount team have deemed fraudulent. We are here primarily to let Guyana know that democracy is at stake because we cannot validate invalidity. We cannot validate illegality. So we are saying to all of Guyana and all of our Guyanese supporters in the diaspora that fraud has been committed. The will of the people is in jeopardy. Guyana's democracy is in jeopardy. And we are calling on the legally to do exactly what the constitution provides for it to do, which is to tabulate only the valid votes. The coalition has claimed that a large percentage of the ballot boxes in this year's elections contain some sort of irregularity. Imagine if every time you press that like button, I get tickled. <laughs> Comment and let me know what you think of today's top stories. And in other news, Jagdio has assured public sector employees that their jobs are safe. 
For now, speaking outside of Freedom House on Tuesday night, Jagdio said that his party will not be engaged in any witch hunting exercise. He said, quote, a lot of people, they, are spreading fears in their minds about losing their jobs, but ordinary people don't have to worry about the PPP, whether they voted for APNU AFC or not, because we take care of all Guyanese. End quote. However, he pointed out there are a few persons at the top level who will have to face the consequences of their actions. So people of all races, all religion, yeah. all of our people yes. will have a fair share in the, in the new yes. government. And there are a lot of people that they are spreading fears in their hearts about oh they're going to lose their jobs. Yeah. Ordinary people don't have to worry from, about the PVP. Whether they voted for APNO or not, because we take care of all Ghanese, all the children. Yeah. Yeah. The few who have to worry are the couple on top, a few of them, about 10 of them. Are so I hear you, Jaggy, but I've also heard this song from APNU in 2015. Oh well, only time will tell. Master, make some of the sexiest affordable cars. Here's one. This 2016 Mazda Roadster is available at BM Soaked for just 4.5 million. Pay down 1.5 million and floss your body with their in-house financing option. Call them today on telephone number 231 84 51 or visit their showroom at lot 9 Crow Street, Georgetown. BM Soaked Auto sales. It's your turn to drive. On Tuesday, a 44-year-old housewife was beaten and robbed by three armed bandits who broke into her home in Kuru Kururu, Linden Seusdike Highway. Joanne Kelman was in her bedroom when three men entered her home, beat her, and held her at gunpoint. They then proceeded to steal valuables and cash from the woman. According to police, the perpetrators then made good on their escape in a Nissan Tita motor car that belonged to one of the occupants of the home. The vehicle was later discovered by police at Friendship East Bank Demerara. No arrests have been made as of yet. Here is a story I hope you all take seriously. The Chief Medical Officer Shamdio Pasad stated on Tuesday that Region 2 Pomeroon Supernam recorded its first case of the Rona. This translates to 8 out of 10 regions reporting active cases. As of Tuesday, Guyana has confirmed 12 new cases, bringing our total number of persons infected with the disease to 171. There are presently 60 active cases in institutional isolation and 24 cases in quarantine. While 12 have died, 99 persons have recovered so far. And finally, a painting by the famous artist Vincent van Gogh could easily be sold for millions. But recently, a museum in Amsterdam bought a letter the artist wrote describing his visits to the brothels of Paris, France. The Van Gogh Museum in Holland bought the letter for 210,600 euros. The letter was written a few weeks prior to the artist cutting off his ear before walking to our nearby brothel to present it to a, a maid at the establishment. In the letter, he excitedly describes his experience, one that he loved so much that he would eventually go on to actually paint a portrait of the, uh, the uh, house of ill repute. Uh -huh. Anyway, that's all for tonight's Uncut News. Be sure to like this video if you haven't, and subscribe to Guyana Uncut for more. Goodbye for now. Hey, Uncut News viewers, thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here, or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now.